The TTP is a very rare blood disorder. It's a, it's a life-threatening disorder acutely, uh, but very, very treatable as long as treatment is initiated rapidly. The commonest form is what we call immune TTP, and that's where patients have developed an antibody to a protein in the blood that regulates blood clotting. It's got quite a long name, but the short name is ADAMPS13, and that's the commonest form. We also have the congenital type of TTP. That's much rarer, and that's when you're born with an abnormality in the gene, which means you don't produce this enzyme. So TTP occurs because there's a deficiency of this enzyme called ADAMS13, either because antibodies are attacking it in the immune form or because not enough of it is being produced in the congenital form. Without this essential protein, the blood clotting mechanism doesn't function normally and the resulting effect is the formation of very, very small blood clots which are made of blood cells called platelets. And these clots occur in the very small blood vessels that we call the microvasculature and in TTP it typically affects the brain and the heart but also as the red blood cells go past these blood clots they get damaged and patients get a deficiency of red blood cells and that's called anemia. There's nothing within the patient's lifestyle to cause immune TTP. It happens out of the blue, it's an internal switch in the immune system. Very often it may be triggered off by an infection and it could be a, a simple infection such as a cough or a cold, but occasionally it can be triggered off during pregnancy. So at UCLH we have a dedicated TTP service and we were the first in the country to have that. We are certainly the largest centre that treats this condition in the UK and probably internationally and we usually have inpatients with the condition as well as our large outpatient clinics following up patients longer term. We have nursing staff dedicated to TTP and along with the consultants who've been doing this for nearly 20 years, we're absolutely dedicated to ensuring best patient care and we've been able to demonstrate that over many years working with patients and their families. The presentation of TTP can be very variable. So because the whole body can be affected and different organs be affected, the ways in which TTP can present can be very different. Some patients are incredibly unwell and sometimes TTP is picked up much earlier and patients aren't as symptomatic, but there's always this risk of very rapid deterioration, which is why patients are admitted to start urgent treatment. Patients may have neurological symptoms and these are symptoms related to the brain, so headaches, they may develop some confusion or blood vision. They may occasionally get more severe symptoms, uh, including things like abnormal sensations in their arms or legs or difficulty with speech. They can be what we call very non-specific, that is patients feel tired, they feel a bit fluey, they notice they have more bruises. But really TTP can present in a, in a whole host of ways, but usually patients are symptomatic in some way, often with neurological symptoms and have sought medical attention because of it. So when they come into hospital, the first thing we do is organise plasma exchange. Plasma is the liquid part of the blood that contains all the proteins and it contains the ADAMS13 protein which patients are deficient in. So if we give plasma, we can replace that. So the way we do that is by essentially exchanging the patient's plasma using a machine called an apheresis machine. So plasma exchange allows us to give a large amount of ADAMS13 but also wash out some of the large sticky clotting factors and some of the antibodies that are causing the problem. So when a patient is admitted, a large drip is placed into one of the veins, either at the top of the leg or in the neck, and plasma exchange is, is started. Typically, at the point where we're doing plasma exchanges, patients are quite exhausted. Um, they often sleep through the exchanges, which, you know, is, is good for them. Plasma exchange takes three to five hours, and it will be repeated every day or sometimes twice a day if patients are extremely unwell until the platelet count is back up into the normal range. One of the jobs of being a CNS, as well as being there for that acute management, is to be there to support and give advice and educate your patients, to introduce them to the team, introduce them to what you do. Most of the time, they're very anxious. 
the most reassuring thing to say to them is, yes, this is a really rare disease, but at UCLH, it's not that rare. The other part of treatment, because this is an immune disorder, is to suppress the immune system using medication. And we use steroids, sometimes through a drip, and then as tablets. And we also use a drug called rituximab, which helps block the blood cells that make the antibody that causes TTP. The third part of, of modern TTP treatment is a medicine called caplasuzumab, which is given as an injection, usually into the tummy once a day. And that works by disrupting the formation of those little clots that are causing all the damage. And it's been shown to speed up recovery of the platelets and therefore improve a uh, patient's outcome. Many years ago, patients were in hospital for weeks to months. We're now in a position, particularly with caplicizumab, where we can normalise the platelet count much quicker. So it means the time in hospital has been significantly reduced. And it means rehabilitation can start much earlier. So we need reassurance from a medical point of view that their platelet counts are going to be increasing, that their ADAMS 13 level will be increasing, so that they're in this sort of safe haematological perspective to go home. The rituximab, which is typically given as at least four infusions a few days apart can be continued as an outpatient if patients require a few more infusions and the caplicizumab injections can be administered at home for a few weeks following discharge. One thing we always say to patients is that you know we let you go home but we're going to keep very close contact. We'll be seeing them weekly, they have our contact details if they need us at any point so that they can go home and feel, and feel comfortable. The follow-up of patients with ITTP is critical. What we do is monitor the ADAMS13 protein by measuring this in the outpatient clinic. ADAMS13 is the enzyme that's being attacked by the immune system. And um, what we want to, to see is that attack has been switched off. And, and patients at that stage are reviewed at least once a week. But as we see that the antibody is cleared from the blood, we're able to see them less frequently, typically every three or six months. We will continue to follow our patients up longer term. They will always remain part of our service with careful monitoring to minimise the risk of any future TTP relapse. Everybody's experience is different. It's important, therefore, that we're able to provide individualised support and we're able to refer to specialists, for example, a neuropsychologist or to a clinical psychologist or counsellor if it's required. We've got a lot of information and support for the patients, including welfare support, complementary therapy, and also we have the TCP network, which is also run by patients, which is fantastic for, for patients to, to go on to and have a chat with other people about it.